You come up to the estimate tab and you click the plus sign. You will be able to enter your client's info. Once you get the client info entered and you click create estimate, it will take you to this. I'm going to click cancel right here, but when you after you get the the customer's info, it when you put them in, it will put them on like the projects tab here. And to get into that project, you can click on this I. And here comes your estimate. So this is estimate number 1809, 1918, um, yeah, and so forth up here. So you can also get to this page right after you enter the client information and you click create estimate. It will also take you to this screen right here. So let's go through and let's just do kind of step through this here. So um, one thing that uh, can be a little confusing is that um, this this button here, this pencil, that will allow you to change the project information. So this is the project's address, it's the project notes, and these are the internal notes for the project, and it's who owns that project. And here's the project number. And if it had a project name, it would go right here. So you can change the project information by clicking update. In fact, let's do that. Let's just give it a project name. We'll call it uh, Troy's House. And we'll update that. OK, so now you can see that it has a project name. Now, if you put my phone number in wrong, to edit that information, you're going to have to click on this link here and you that will bring you to this pencil to change the client information and then you could change the the, the client information there well, let's go back into the project by clicking the I alright let's move to this next line here this is the contacts line um, let's say you went out and you gave the estimate and the wife was home and she's the one that actually called for the estimate. So her information is going to be in here. When you get there and she says, well, you're going to have to email that to my husband. Um, he'll make the decision. You would enter them in this contact information right here. So you can have several contacts within a project. This might also be the case if you're doing a commercial project and you have an engineer, an architect, a foreman, the billing department, you know, all of the information you need for that project, the, the personal information, phone numbers, emails, and those kinds of things you're going to put in the contact here. So this is your actions line. Uh, once you get the estimate complete, you'll mark it complete here, and then it's going to ask to schedule it and who's going to schedule it. Um, and you can reassign it that way. You can reassign it here. Who will schedule the estimate? Um, you can pick whoever, whatever estimator is going to go out there and actually do the estimate. Um, so probably before um, you actually get to this point where you're creating the estimate, it will have been scheduled. Um, so let's just go ahead and schedule it right now. Let's schedule it for tomorrow at 8 o'clock and it's going to go to 9 o'clock a.m. okay and it's a uh, front walkway Okay, so I'm going to reassign that. Okay, so now we've got to schedule that. So let's just put it over here. Let's just drop it there. It didn't save my time, but let's just click Schedule Estimate. Okay, so now the estimate's actually scheduled. Um, you'll go out to the house and you'll start taking measurements and things like that um, and we're gonna create a line item estimate here 
So you'll click on line item and you'll say uh, we're going to do a void fill and we're going to charge um, 900 for it. Well, let's say we're going to void fill the front walkway and the units is optional and we're going to say we're going to charge $200 for that front walkway and there's just a quantity of one and we're going to put a description alright and then you can put a, a group there too so you can call it front walkway front walk if you want so we'll save that okay and then let's say they want us to do the back patio too so we're going to do a line item for the back patio and we're going to charge 300 for it and there's just one of those and we're going to put lift okay so we'll do that we'll just go ahead and call this the back patio group as well okay we'll save that so you have your line items and you have your prices in there they are different groups um, you can edit that group name let me show you a feature here so let's say that they want a line item estimate but they don't know which ones they're going to do now obviously you're gonna have a minimum charge our minimum charge here is five hundred dollars but yours might be eight or nine or three if you want um, but let's say they want you to break this estimate down into sections. What you can do is you can open up this group and you can click this check mark. It's not going to include it into the estimate total. So we're going to save that. See this little asterisk right here? That signifies to you that it's not included in the total. So it only shows $300 down here. Let me show you why that's important. When you email this to them, I'm going to go ahead and complete this estimate. It was completed by Troy, and I'm going to follow up on the work. And let's just say I'm going to follow up tomorrow. I'm going to call this person tomorrow and see if they want to do the work. So I'm going to complete the estimate. Okay, now notice down here on the proposals line, it shows pending. So the way these estimates go out is you can email it and it's going to have a link in it. And that link is going to take your customer to what we call the customer portal. You can view their customer portal by clicking on this arrow, going down to customer portal. This is what your customer is actually going to see. Troy's house, active documents, estimate. So I'm going to open this estimate and this is really important. Notice that the $300 that I included in the estimate shows here, but the $200 back patio is an option. So they can accept that option, agree to pay $500. This is that they, they agree to electronic documents, and they can, act, they can type their name in there, or if you're using a tablet or anything like that, you can, if it has a touch screen, you can, uh, they can sign it there and then they will click accept so that's a that's a really neat feature um, and if I were to go back to the estimate and to make the back patio if I did edit group let me go back there if I went back here I could actually edit that group and I could take the checkbox off include in the estimate now if you change anything in your estimate it there's there's a very specific digital footprint to everything you do um, in estimate rocket and a, you know a lot of that's for legal reasons um, they don't want a customer to accept an estimate and then you go back in and charge them more money for it 
So if you change an estimate, you have to come back down here to proposals and you have to create a new estimate, you have to push save. Now watch what this does down here to the projects, the proposals line. Your first project that you put in was canceled and this is the updated project, the pending one. So let's go back into the customer portal and look what happens here. Here's the canceled one, here's the updated one, and notice that they can accept or reject either either one of those. They can pick which one they want. Okay, so let's close these out. And you, you can actually delete this canceled project out of the portal by clicking on the arrow and deleting the proposal. You just have to say OK. So another great feature to Estimate Rocket 2 is when you go out, we, we typically recommend using an iPad or some kind of a tablet to do your estimates. So you can take pictures of what you're going to be doing and you can upload them here. And you know, a tablet or something is really easy to navigate so you can put the pictures in. I'm going to go back into the projects tab and just show you an example. And this all auto saves too, so you don't have to worry, worry about losing your work. Let's go in here. I'm just going to pick a random project and you can see how we take a picture of the home so when the crew pulls up they know what they're looking for and then you can see the areas that we want to lift we mark in red that's easily done with a, a tablet here's the front walkway so they can see exactly what there's always this communication error between this or uh, communication problem between the salesperson and the crew person this really helped us to minimize the communication errors um, lifting the wrong slabs you know those kinds of things customer saying you were supposed to do this but you didn't and we can go back to the pictures uh, you can also put notes in there so let's go back to our test we'll go back into the projects tab and we'll do a search for test test here's our hashtag one two three that we put in previously all right now you can preview the estimate to see what it's going to look like but it it doesn't always show you the exact one that you've been working on because um, you haven't like updated it yet so I would recommend you always go in to the customer portal and you look at the customer portal because that's actually what your customer is going to see when you email them the link all right so we've done a few line items we've uh, talked about how to do photos proposals uh, this is where you can create invoices change orders things like that you can add payments this is going to be kind of on the finance side so we'll we'll wait to do that now you can attach files to your estimates but you have to upload the file to the server first so you have to click on files you have to go in here you have to choose the file that you want um, to upload maybe it's the warranty information or they want a brochure to send their grandfather you know whatever it is you can send them a file but you have to upload it to the server first um, also you can send you can set up email 